I was asked to speak on the word restore. To restore, as we all know, is to bring back to a former or original or normal condition. To restore is to put back to a former position or rank. You remember what happened in Genesis 40 verse 21. How the chief butler was restored to his butlership after he left the prison yard. To restore is to bring back to a state of health or soundness or vigor. Jeremiah 30 verse 17. Jeremiah 30 verse 17 it says, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wound, says the Lord. All of you that are sick, the Lord will restore health to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, to restore is to return something lost or something stolen to the owner. I don't know what the enemies had taken from you or stolen from you. There shall be recovery. In the mighty name of Jesus. Joel chapter 2 tells me in verse 25. Joel 2 25 says, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker womb and the caterpillar and the palm womb, my great army which I sent among you. This morning, by the grace of God, the journey is not far. I like to focus on the personality that you all know very well. That the Job, if you like, call him Uncle Job. If you like it, if you like, call it Brother Job. Job lost many precious things. But the good news is that at the end, he experienced marital, financial, material and mental restoration. If God could do it for Job, he would do it for you and I. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the historical part of his life. The Bible tells me that Job had a pleasant beginning. A wonderful one. The Bible tells me that God blessed Job spiritually. He was perfect. He was upright. He feared God and he eschewed or he abstained from evil. Job chapter 1 verse 1 is my informant. Apart from spiritual blessings, God blessed Job materially. He had 7,000 sheep. He had 3,000 camels. He had 500 yoke of oxen. He had 500 she ashes. Job chapter 1 verse 3 is my witness. Apart from spiritual and material blessings, God blessed Job maritally. He had seven sons and three beautiful daughters. How do I know? I read Job chapter 1 verse 2. So spiritually, he was loaded. Materially, he was loaded. Maritally, he was loaded. And when you are loaded, you will be needed. The Bible tells me that Job and his entire household were divinely laminated. May God laminate you. When you are laminated, you become untouchable. No evil hands will touch you. And no evil eyes will see you. Job chapter 1 verse 10 tells me that God made an edge about Job and about his household and about all that he had on every side. I also read that of all the men in the east, Job was considered the greatest. Job experienced God's glory until Satan paid him a visit. That's where we are going. Uncle, if Satan hasn't visited you, it's because he's busy somewhere. When he finishes his assignment, he's coming. So be prepared. Because the Bible didn't say he's somewhere. It says he's going about seeking. He will find you. Let your amen have flesh on but He will find you in the name of Jesus. Whenever Satan pays anyone a visit, his missions are to steal or to kill or to destroy. Job 10.10 10 tells me so. After Satan paid Job 
unpleasant visitations. Job lost his 7,000 sheep. They were all roasted by fire one day. Seven, not seven, not 70, not 700. 7,000 sheep were roasted by fire. Job lost his 3,000 camels to a group of people called the Chadians. Job lost his 500 ashes and 500 yoke of oxen to a group of people called the Sabians. Oh, Job suffered several deductions. Job chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Job lost his seven sons and three daughters one day. <laughs> My prayer for you is, you will never bury any of your children. Ah, that amen must be better than that. <laughs> Finally, Job lost his health. Satan smoked him with boils, saw boils from his feet to his crown. My fathers and my mothers, my brothers and sisters and my seniors, Job suffered losses. He experienced pains. Many people paid him a condolence visit. I don't know if I've ever told you here that when a man loses his parents, he has lost his past. When he loses his spouse, he has lost his present. When a man loses his children, he has lost his future. Let me pray for you. You will never lose your present. You will never lose your tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Ah, they say a cow doesn't know the value of his stay until it is cut off. You may not appreciate the woman you have. I pray you will not lose her. <laughs> if it is not her, eh, nobody can be like her. Appreciate who you have. Because you are not going to be there forever. Every day that passes takes us nearer. One person must go before the other one. Job was lonely. But he wasn't alone. People thought it was over for him. People thought his glory had expired. People thought that his son would never rise again. Hmm. But remember, God's ways are not man's ways. I don't know what the enemies are thinking or planning against you. They will fail. They will not die. But they will see the handwriting of God upon your lives. Because I read, he said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know the meaning. Your enemies will be watching you. You'll be eating salad. After finishing eating, they will come and pack the plates to wash. The question is, how did Job react to his predicaments? Job 1.20 says, he fell down upon the ground and worshipped God. Many people will have complained or murmured or blamed God or grumbled. He fell down and did what? And worshipped God. Brethren, everyone has his own time. At the set time, at the appointed time, God intervened. He opened a new chapter for Job, chapter 42. From chapters 1 to 41, Job suffered losses and pains. But later, God opened chapter 42 for him. In chapter 42, the Bible says God blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Now, restoration. Job experienced greater glory, a new beginning. In fact, God gave him double portion. You want to know in chapter 42, God gave him 14,000 sheep to replace the 7,000 that the devil took away from him. God gave him 6,000 camels. If you want to know, read Job 42, 12 to 14. God gave him a thousand ash, I mean, a yoke of oxen and a thousand she ashes. Then God gave him seven sons and three beautiful daughters to replace those ones that died. Job's health was restored. Job recovered all that the enemies took from him, even double portion. God gave him good health and long life. Job experienced peace. You must know the God of peace before you can enjoy the peace of God. Job, the glory of the latter end was greater than the former. 
What Job had before then was a credit alert. God later gave him what I call credit alarm. Are you there? Our father in the Lord, our big father in the Lord, your pastor, was saying something here, very important. There is what we call setup. You know the meaning of setup. God shot Anna's womb. It was a setup. God didn't want her to carry just any child. God wanted to give her a child among children. And there was an appointed time for Samuel to come. At the appointed time, God opened her womb and gave her Samuel. Check. The moment Samuel came, all the mockers were silenced. We never heard about Penina again. We never heard about her children again. That miracle that we silence all your mockers. Before 2024 expires, the Lord will release to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Missing us. Was it really missing? It wasn't missing. It was a setup. Thank God for the missing us. Without that, he wouldn't have encountered Samuel. I mean, Saul. It was after he encountered Samuel because he was looking for the missing us. That uh, revelation came out. His destiny. Where he should be. I always believe brethren. Nobody is useless in life. Whosoever you come across in life. If the person is not a blessing to you. It must be a lesson to you. Do you know you can learn from a mad person? I mean somebody who is madly mad. You can learn from anybody. Do you know that the word itself is a school? Some of you, you depend on academic institution alone. What you learn in that institution is probably 10%. The real lesson is outside. You don't learn 419 activities in school. Uh, when you come out, to Bagbon, to Jassi, Wajapa. Amen, somebody. So anyone you come across in life, if the person is not a blessing, it must be a lesson to you. There are some lessons we must take home from the story of Job. Lesson number one. The downfall of a man who is in Christ can never be the end of his life. Are you in Christ? Oh. <laughs> Sometimes things must get bitter before they get better. Have you heard that difficult roads often lead to beautiful destinations? Some of us, unlike you, we had a background. But God didn't allow our background put us on the ground. Check it out. If things are better today, they are not going to remain like that forever. And if you, laugh, you are laughing at somebody who is passing through, I pity you. To laugh at infirmity or deformity is an enormity. You get it? Because you don't know your own tomorrow. Another lesson is that the time of waiting on the Lord is not a waste. It is better to be on the waiting list of God than to be on the wasting list of the devil. Job spoke in Job 14.14. 14. He says, all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. Learn to be patient if you don't want to become a patient. If you are not patient, you will soon become a patient. Because high blood pressure will come and other things will come. Another lesson is, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Psalm 30 verse 5 is my witness. All those who are on top today, ask them questions. They will tell you that probably they had a rough beginning. I went to five primary schools without failing. That's condition because I lost my father the year I was born. The same year. Maybe, and it, my father was old. He died at the age of 34. I'm sure you know the meaning. It was very rough. I thought I suffered by going to five primary schools until I met somebody who went to seven. My senior professional colleague in suffering. Today he's a big man. In fact, he wants to be a governor in his state. And I thought I've had it all until I went to preach in one Catholic church 
And I told them the story that I went to five, somebody went to seven. A man, an ambassador, raised up his hand. He said he went to nine. But today is an ambassador. Are you there? Do you know you are better than many people? Some people have food they cannot eat. Some people can eat. They don't have food. By the grace of God, you and I have food. And we can consume. We can eat. It's grace of God. Do you know that the best student in the class may not necessarily be the best outside? When you were in school, there were some students that were extraordinarily brilliant. Where are they today? They are not close to you. Anu Larigba. Anu Larigba. Believe me. If among your colleagues, you are better than many people. Some of the things you want to throw away, some of your friends will embrace them. And you are complaining here. A boy wanted to commit suicide. So the wife ran to me and I sent for the boy. The guy, he came. Because then he borrowed two million from the bank. He couldn't pay. Not now, you know, two million was, uh, you know. And he wanted to end it up. So I, I sent for him. I didn't advise him not to kill himself. But we went into acad academics. So I said, let us open T account. How many accountants are in the house? God bless you. Those ones, they don't have problems in heaven because they know how to give account why they are here. Okay. T account. Sir, are you educated? He said, yes. Is that a credit or a debit? Are you an asset or a liability? He said, asset. Oh yeah, put it there. Are you married? He said, yes. You needed to see the wife, just like the pastor's wife. Very, very beautiful. Is she an asset or a liability? Asset, put it there. Did you go to school? She said, yes. What level? He said, masters. Asset or liability? Asset, put it there. Do you have a car? Say yes. What type of car? Uh, BMW. Asset or liability? Asset. Put it there. Do you have children? Say yes. How many of them? Two. A boy and beautiful children. Asset or liabilities? Say assets. Put them there. Do you have a job? Say yes, sir. But, mm -mm, I say remove but. Do you have a job? Yes, sir. Asset or liability? Asset. Put it there. By the time we calculated all that God had done for him. He saw his foolishness. And do you know he would have committed suicide? And I told the wife, anybody who wants to commit suicide doesn't announce it. <laughs> the fact that he had told you is he doesn't know. Didn't you see the picture of a man who with a rope? He was he just tied the rope there. He wanted to put and somebody he had a gunshot. You know what he did? He ran. He wasn't ready for suicide. And there was another one. The wife tried at home to prevent him. He refused. He escaped. Don't kill yourself now. What did he escape? By the time he got to the express, a trailer was just coming. He had gotten to the middle of the road. He ran back. He said, these people are wicked. They can kill. I said, you want to die? It will have been an easier way. To go. It's not easy. Now, everybody wants to go to heaven. Is that how many of us make it to heaven? Let me see your You know now, heaven is your portion. You will make it. Oh, or you believe people who say there is no heaven. <laughs> Somebody was saying there is no heaven, that heaven is here. But Nepal is still here. They still put off light. In heaven, there is no darkness. Is that not so, sir? If you, miss, if you mistakenly leave your phone on your seat, and you go. By the time you come back next week, will you meet the phone? It cannot happen in heaven. So we are not in heaven yet. Anyway, but we, once you give your life to Christ, you have started the journey to heaven. Anyway, let's leave that one. All of us want to get to heaven. But how many of us want to die now? 
If you want to die now, we'll raise up your hand. You see now? If you want to prosper now, raise, raise up your hand. I also join you. So join. Glory be to God. So brethren, there is provision for restoration. Provided you are where God wants you to be. Are you dead? I told them in the morning, any evangelist who is bringing people to church instead of bringing people to Christ is a marketer. Any church that is raising found without raising people to heaven is a finance house. Are you there? Any choir concert without salvation messages is an entertainment. Brethren, it says, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Answer that question, sir. God can still reverse the irreversible. With God, there is hope for you. So don't lose hope. If you are still young, there are mountains to climb, there are valleys to avoid, there are, you know. But at the end of the day, you will shine. Ask the people on top. They will tell you stories. I met a guy after 30 something years. He was my junior in school, but older than I. Because we had no money, we used to trek 10 miles, 12 miles together. In fact, to shorten the journey to about 10 miles or thereabout, we will go through the river. No keno. We'll go through the river. We're catching fish together. We're doing everything together. I met him about recently. He came to the church. So I, 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 I recognized him. And I announced to the whole church that that guy had PhD in trekking. But we never knew that a time would come. Are you there? All those places where I was trekking then. Now I go there with machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've forgotten about the past. So it doesn't matter what you are passing through now. Your breakthrough awaits you. Amen. Which year? Is it possible for God to do? So I rejoice with you because I know your tomorrow will be better and not bitter in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Do you permit me to speak Yoruba? Do you believe? Ni lokpo ati lokpo ati lokpo ati lokpo. Pastor Ben Akabuzi invited me to his church. I was there. And um, we were talking about credit alert and credit alarm. That when you get an alert, you, you only hear pim. It's for your own consumption. If you don't tell your neighbor, your neighbor will not know what has come in. But that is credit alert. But if it is credit alarm, uh, you can't hide. Your neighbors will be the one to congratulate you because they will have seen it. Like your new car. You can't park the car inside. When they see your new car outside, they will knock at the door and congratulate you. So his sister called from US and said, sir, that church is my church, but I traveled abroad. Very painful, but I had no choice but to travel. So somebody sent me the video and where you said credit alert, credit alert, it was among the white people. Then, you know, maybe that deception or something. So when I said credit alarm and I prayed for them, he, she, she shouted, Amen. In fact, she was embarrassed because the people shouted, What's wrong with this woman? You know. So she left for her room and switched off the light according to her. Ten minutes on the bed, she just heard PM. Say, Daddy. When she looked at it, not one million, not two million, not three million, not four million. She kept on not eight million. So she stopped there. She said she, she arose and went to switch on the light. And the footnote is to assist you for your business that is in coma. Every business that is in coma here will rise again in the name of Jesus. He says, so daddy, thank you very much. Help me praise God. And then prayer contractor. Praise God. But she never knew. She wasn't there physically. Brethren, distance is not a barrier when God is involved. 
it doesn't matter where you are. Provided you are where God wants you to be and you are divinely connected, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Is there anything you have lost? Do you have something that the enemies have taken away from you? Relax. Very soon, just like Job, you will recover all. Job lost 7,000 sheep. God gave him 14,000. Are you there? Relax. Tomorrow will be better and not bitter. Do you know that this Tom Milan brick in 1971-72, I caught fish there and crabs. On commercial basis, there was no Tom Milan bridge there. I caught fish. And sometime we were not using Keno. We were standing on the, the timber there. We were catching fish. Do you know that I hawked fufu before for my mom? And the, the houses in the villages in those days, they, you had the kitchen at the back, not in the front. Not within the house, but at the back of the house. So if, if you were hawking, if you never made a noise, nobody would know you were around. So we had to compose songs. You want to hear some of the songs? What thing concern you now? All things have passed away. So you must sing. And whether you believe it or not, it was a setup for me. That was where I knew how to compose songs. Because if you didn't sing, the people at the back would not know. And then there were some wicked buyers. May God forgive them. Who want to buy fufu? Just one. And you give me something like 50 cover. So you must put your fufu down and then begin to look for the balance or what they call change. After going and whatever, you know. Do you know I caught fish before? I did. But that story has changed from grass to grace. Is that not better than to say from grace to grass? God forbid. So, my brothers and my sisters, ladies and gentlemen, and my seniors, because I call you my seniors, whether you believe it or not, you are going to be higher than I. You are going to be richer. You are going to be better in the mighty name of Jesus. Relax. Just make sure you serve God. You get it? The appointed time. Make sure you are patient. It is better to grow up than to go up. The political son, I mean, political son went up and he crash landed. Thank God he came to himself and he did the needful. He went back to his father to be reconnected. I beg you, you are youth. You have a brighter future. I told them, I, I never got things early in life. Academics, if I tell you the, year, the age I was when I finished my PhD, you'll be dazed. If I tell you the, my age when I got married, I got married very, you know, at an old age. I married at the age of 28. I know you will laugh. You know, in those days, my mates, 24, 23, 25, you know, unlike now. I never used a car on time. I bought my first car at the age of 30. And very costly. I bought it for 70,000 era. And when I was going to school, when I gained admission the second time, my company lent me 2,000 era tuition fee. To be able to go to school. 2,000 naira. One month. And they spread it within eight months. There are some things you will say here. They are not relevant. Now only me know. I don't get things on time. But when my own comes. I remember. I was listening to Uta Tassel. And. Um, we were four. In that building. New house. We were all tenants. They were calling me Mr. Kalejai. We were calling ourselves Mr. Mr. And they later became, in fact, one of us became an MD of a bank in Nigeria. The other one became an insurance guru. I mean, just like that. One day I came home with Mercedes Benz. That was my second car. 
because somebody bought it for me. He says, sir, you have power, but you don't have money. Go and price a car of your choice. <laughs> anyway, the person gave me money. I bought my Mercedes Benz, the most costly in that place. Then, and I bought it for 250000 When I took the Mercedes Benz home, those who were calling me Mr. Kalejai, they started calling me Daddy. Believe me honestly. Ah, a change of name. I mean, nobody told them, when you are loaded, you'll be needed. And when you are on top, you become a topic. Do you know that? It doesn't matter what you have today. The best, not the better, the best is on the way for you. The maximum of others will be your minimum in Jesus' name. Let me tell you something today. What you have in your wardrobe, sisters, and you consider the best very soon, you won't find it in your wardrobe again. Are you there? So let me provoke you. Those of you that are marriageable but you are still single, begin to buy your wedding items. I'm not sure you are going to be taller than this before your wedding. Buy your wedding gown. Buy wedding Bibles. Buy everything that has to do with it. And those of you who want to jackpa, how many of you want to jackpa? You are not going. I won't pray for you. That, all of you will now go. Who will be here? How many of you want to buy vehicles? You want to use a better one or a new one? Let me see. I oh, know. Don't pray. Hey, go and buy key rings. I did it. I did it and it worked for me. I bought key rings. I mean, I did a, oh, pedal lock. I didn't know that you must buy a vehicle before you. I bought Gusha. No car. <laughs> I, kept on, I kept on buying. I kept on buying. Do you know, sir? God did it for me. God did it. Do something to provoke it. And God will make it possible. In the name of Jesus. I hope with these few points of mine, I've been able to convince you and not to confuse you. That everything you have lost in the physical and the spiritual shall be restored. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And those who have said bye bye to you because they thought it is over, they will come back to you. And all your mockers will soon bow to you in the name of Jesus. Shall we please rise for prayers? I want us to start with gratitude. Say, Father, I thank you, sir, for everything that you have done for me and for everything that you have done through me. Please take the glory in the name of Jesus. Brethren, let gratitude be your attitude. Thank the Lord. Yes, appreciate him. Bless his name. Lord, for everything that you have done for me, I give you the glory. For everything that you have done through me, I say thank you. Please take the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I want you to pray and say, Father, I'm sure you will understand this. Job, from chapter 1 to chapter 41, oh God, Job suffered losses, pains, and agony. But God opened chapter 42 for him. A chapter of recovery, a chapter of restoration, a chapter of a new beginning, a chapter of double portion, a chapter of joy. Are you ready for that chapter? Say, Father, like Job, open chapter 42 for me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. He said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Chapter 42 to Job is a chapter of joy. Father, open a new chapter for me. Open chapter 42 for me. Let me recover all that the enemies had stolen from me. Some of you are sickly. You will recover your health. Whatever your businesses must have lost, you will recover. Like that sister said, every business in coma will recover in Jesus' name. Maritally, you used to enjoy. Now you are enduring your home. Whatever you must have lost, you will recover in Jesus' name. The peace of God will return in Jesus' name. Your life will be meaningful. I thank you, my Father Lord. King of glory, we are grateful to you. Thank you for divine restoration. Thank you for recovery. Recovery of health. Recovery of lost opportunities. And recovery of time. Thank you, Father Almighty God. Lord, I present and I hand over this, your children, to you. The year is about to expire. I pray none of you will expire with this year. 
I know some of you will likely travel before the end of this year. Wherever you go, the presence of the Most High will accompany you. You will go safely and return safely. Every desire of your heart that is good, the Lord will provide and grant unto you. Speedily in the name of Jesus. Those of you who have challenges over your health, the Lord will touch you this morning. He will take you to his own theater. He will operate divinely on you. In Jesus' name we pray. It. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you very much for clapping for Jesus Christ. Is anyone here this morning who wants God to help him? Let me. You want God to help you. The Bible says, For vain is the help of man. The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from where cometh my help. He said, My help cometh from the Lord. All other ground, or let's say, other ground is a sinking sound. Again, how many of us want? Okay. If you want God to help you, brethren, do the needful. Surrender your life to him. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. I will help you. I will restore you. I will open a new chapter for you. So if you are here this morning, you want God to help you and you are prepared or you are willing to surrender to him, wave your hands and I pray for you before we go. God bless you. Just rise to your feet. Those of you who are waving your hands, you want to surrender to Jesus. God bless you. Today marks the beginning of a new life, a better life for that matter. Can you please carry your bags and your Bibles and come to the other side quickly before the expiration of five minutes? Thank you. Go, come quickly, come quickly. Let them come before you give them the cards so that we can. God bless you. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. For salvation, thank you, Jesus. Papa, thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. For provision, thank you, Jesus. I say thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you on behalf of these, your sons and daughters who have registered their willingness to surrender to you. Father, please, sir, have mercy on them in Jesus' name. My Lord, there is no medicated soap that can wash away sins. It is only the blood of Jesus Christ that can do it. Father, please wash them with the blood of Jesus. I pray you go to the foundation of their families and rewrite their records. Father, do so in Jesus' name. Every plan of the enemies against any of them, Father, we cancel in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are praying. I want you to please open your eyes. Kindly follow our there. Our there. Oh, you are too far from them now. Our, okay. Just wave your hands, the ushers there. Uh -huh. Kindly follow those wonderful creatures. We want to have your names and your contact addresses, if possible, your prayer request. We promise to keep your secret secret. The Lord bless you. Kindly follow our dear sisters. God bless you. I am rejoicing. My name has been written. I am rejoicing for I am born again. What about you?